Hey everybody, two alpha gals here. I'm Debbie Nichols. And I'm Candace Mathis. And you're listening to In the Tall Grass, where we're sharing stories of reinvention, resilience, and rediscovering joy. Whether it's facing alpha gal syndrome or any other redefining chapter of life, we all have to learn how to navigate the journey through the tall grass. So here we go. Hey, everybody. So last week we shared a new Gals Go Shopping where Debbie and I went to Target on our favorite aisle, the wine aisle. (laughs) And we have been receiving a lot of messages ever since we released these two videos um, where we showed safe options for wine. And a lot of people are wanting to know why is some wine and beer not safe? And is there other alcohol that can be consumed that is safe? We've just been getting a ton of questions. So we wanted to come on and just chat a little bit more about our experience with alcohol and some interesting facts that you may or may not have known about. So to start us off, I think Debbie and I wanted to share a little bit about how alcohol can be a cofactor when you're dealing with alpha gal or any other food allergic condition. So according to the NIH, alcohol consumption is associated with more severe food allergic symptoms, um, as well as physical exercise, medication, hormonal shifts. I know that I've talked a lot about this, um, with a lot of people that I had a lot of, um, anaphylactic episodes around my cycle. So it definitely contributes. So it definitely can add to your reactivity. Debbie, have you had any of that happen to you as well? Yes. Yeah. I've noticed that if I am having a drink, I am more sensitive, um, even to my non-alpha gal allergies, actually, you know, if I'm having a glass of wine, I avoid some of the really mild allergens that I test positive for things like peanuts and soy. It it definitely appears to be a cofactor. And it's been interesting reading about the studies with alpha gal syndrome with alcohol as a cofactor, because it sounds like alpha gal is even more sensitive. Did you, did you read that, that alpha gal is more sensitive. Yeah, I did. And, you know, looking back at my own experiences, it, I've seen a lot of parallels. I mean, I think in the beginning when things were really more acute for me, I, if I had a glass of wine with dinner that may have included a higher histamine food, it kind of was this bucket tip, right? Like I would get more flushed or my nose would run. Um, or I would feel that kind of disconnected feeling. I'd kind of go through a lot of different symptoms, but I started to learn like, Hey, maybe today, since it's high pollen, you know, grass season, I don't know. I started to learn where it might not be a good idea to have that glass of red wine or bourbon. I remember having this exact conversations with you, like, okay, let's look at how full our buckets are right now. (laughs) Right. Is Is it worth is it worth maybe triggering a reaction? One yeah. of the other really interesting things I read in in these studies was that some people will only react if alcohol is involved. So that maybe they wouldn't necessarily react because we know that this range of severity in alpha gal syndrome is so broad and varied. And so some people who don't react on a normal basis may actually react when they're consuming alcoholic products. Yeah, it is very fascinating and something that I knew nothing about in 2019. (laughs) No, no, boy, what have we learned since then? (laughs) I know, which I think kind of lends to why we did this Gals Go Shopping, because I think alcohol, mammal-based products in alcohol were one of our, like, no way... (laughs) Right. One of those mind blowing facts that we learned that there can actually be trace amounts of mammal products and mammal byproducts in wine and beer and other alcohol, which is scary to think about, right? Because it feels like it's trying to get us from every angle. But the fact of the matter is, is that there are ways to avoid it, which is really cool. So what you and I have learned is that, you know, some 
manufacturers of wine will use gelatin or dairy products in the production of their wine. And the easiest way for us, we found to avoid mammal products in wine is to find wines that actually have a vegan friendly label because then we know that they're not going to have any of these products at all and then as far as beer goes this is another mind-blowing thing because this is for all of you out there who are super sensitive to the red algae epitope you know that red algae can contain the alpha gal epitope even though it is not a mammal uh derivative So some beers will actually use carrageenan or Irish moss in their production. And so if you are super sensitive to alpha-gal, you're going to have to do a deep dive on, on your beer products. And, you know, one thing I wanted to add to the beer conversation and this, uh, this took my breath away. I was getting, I made, I made our quinoa chili the other night, (laughs) our favorite recipe And I wanted to get some pumpkin beer for me and my husband to have with it. And I was looking at them in the refrigerator section at our Kroger and I pulled out a local one and the label actually said contains lactose. So I freaked out for a second in the grocery store, (laughs) (laughs) but then I realized it's so great that they actually put it on the label, right? Because so many of these labels don't when it comes to alcohol. And and so a lot of this becomes a guessing game for us, you know, either, you know, confirm it or don't drink it. Right. But one of the ways that we found to be the most helpful to figure out which wines and other alcohols are safe is to use the website Barnivore. That's B-A-R-N-I-V-O-R-E.com. And you can actually plug in the wine or alcohol that you're looking to purchase, and it will give you the feedback that they've received from the manufacturer on whether or not their products are vegan or vegan friendly or vegan safe. Yeah, they're a great resource. Just double check to make sure that their allergen information is up to date. I have noticed some of them were out of date, but they are a great place to check. And I was also just going to add you know, unfortunately there is no law requiring allergen statements on wine and beer yet. So we kind of do have to do our own legwork, but we're hoping that some of these great finds that we, you know, end up finding will help take, you know, take the legwork out of it for you. So I wanted to share, I know everyone's not on Instagram and may not have seen our cute little video. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> where we but, almost knocked down the aisle, the, <laughs> the whole aisle of wine bottle. Thankfully they were in the cart. They were not <laughs> on the shelf. Um, we had a little faux pas in the aisle where I almost broke five bottles of wine, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but some of the ones we found actually was totally shocked. I was not expecting to find as many in Target because I just tend to go to our local wine store because I know which ones are safe there. But there's a great brand called Yalumba. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but they have something, they have wines called the Y series that you love, Deb. My husband loves that brand too. Juggernaut was one we found at Target, Aveline, Scout Wild, Layer Cake. Those were all great finds. And then if you're local to Virginia, specifically the Charlottesville area, some of our favorite wineries there are Blenheim and Early Mountain, and they are completely safe. I've had conversations with both winemakers. So go give them a visit if you're in the area. Love, love, love their wines. So we also were getting a ton of questions asking about liquor, because if anyone out there knows Debbie and I, they know that we really (laughs) (laughs) are. And so, yes, good news is that the majority of liquor is mostly vegan if you are just getting plain liquor, like your bourbon, your vodka, gin, et cetera. Now you just have to kind of watch out if there's added flavors or flavorings or anything cream-based. You got to avoid Kahlua, Bailey's. You just kind of got got to get into the weeds with that, like really looking to see if all of those added ingredients are safe. Some of them may be, but we we just choose to to go neat with our... <laughs> 
Charlotte. <laughs> in more ways than one, right? <laughs> um, yeah, that is about the best news of all. That at least, you know, when all else fails, you can have some bourbon on ice. <laughs> It is so or whatever however you like to drink it what is your favorite if your bucket was not full <laughs> your histamine uh-huh. were low and you decided to indulge in a, a cocktail or a glass of something what would you choose yeah I am so dependent on the weather like my mood when it comes to alcohol I actually had a cider this weekend because I tend to get a little more in love with ciders when it starts to turn fall there's a great brand called graft they have some really interesting cider but man there's some we have some great potters cider in virginia again props to charlottesville for having some amazing alcohol they are by far my favorite charlottesville has such a great selection i mean it's a couple hours from here but it's worth it's worth the drive to us to, to make it up there to get some good local you know they're, they've been deemed the napa of the east which it may not be exactly that but pretty much like it's one <laughs> country of the east like they, they say something like that in northern virginia too you actually get the signs coming into loudon county that say that like welcome to <laughs> loudon by the way oh <laughs> yeah we drink a lot of wine <laughs> yeah i mean and you just know virginia yeah right you wouldn't expect it but it's pretty amazing. Okay, so I know you love cider. Is there another favorite that you have right now? Oh boy. Well, <laughs> my standby is always going to be bourbon. Like yeah. I just really like a plain bourbon. I don't need anything else in it. It can be on ice. It doesn't have to be on ice. <laughs> um, shout out to our favorite down here, our local guys, our friends over at JH Bards. They make yeah. some of my very favorite that I just enjoy every time. So, yes, I like a glass of wine. Yes, I like a, a cocktail or a cider, as long as they're not too sweet. But I always just love a glass of bourbon. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All this to say, don't withhold if you're not reacting. You know, we talk all the time about how alpha gal syndrome is giving things up. We have to give so many things up. So when you find something that's safe and you're in a safe place that you can have it and you know that you're not going to trigger a reaction by the cofactor factor, (laughs) (laughs) and indulge. Just make sure you do it safely. Yes. So cheers to all of you out there. And until next time. Thank you for joining us today on In the Tall Grass. Visit us at 2alphagals.com. That's T-W-O alphagals.com. Or you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at 2alphagals. If you enjoyed listening, please leave a review and help us grow this community. We're all faced with obstacles on our journey, whether it be food allergies or tick-borne diseases. You might outgrow the reactions, but you won't outgrow the person you become. Ticks suck, but life doesn't have to.